I'm going to open to Luke chapter 10 and verse 1. After these things the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even demons are subject to us in your name. Somebody say amen. amen. And he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that your, the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And in that hour, Jesus rejoiced. God is a happy God. Jesus is not a sad, depressing God. Amen. God is a happy God. And the Bible says Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit. And so he just, just went ecstatic in his heart and said, I thank you, Father, the Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. I always tell my wife, babe, it's from the Bible. Even so, Father, this seemed good in your sight. I just want to speak to you today, authority through assignment or authority by assignment. In chapter 9 of Gospel of Luke, the Bible says Jesus sends out the 12 disciples. They are the, you know, the, the big shots. They're the apostles. And in chapter 9, the Bible says He gives them power over all the demons. But if you study disciples, they struggled with deliverance. Even though they had the power, do you remember how they had the power to cast out demons, but they still couldn't cast out a demon out of a boy? So disciples got the power to cast out demons and they struggled with deliverance. The 70 disciples, watch this. We know, we do not know their name. They're not part of the 12. They're not the apostles. Jesus in here calls them babes. And in verse 3, he says, I send you as lambs among wolves. When he talked about the 12, he says, I send you as sheep among wolves. Meaning, you know, lamb is like a younger version of the sheep. So they were not the 12. They, we don't know their names. They were babes and they were not sheep. They were lambs, meaning they were little ones. And when Jesus sends them in chapter 10, he says, go and preach the gospel, heal the sick. He never gives them authority over demons. Jesus does not empower them with authority over the demonic. He only sends them to go ahead of my face, be like my interns, just go everywhere where I'm about to go and get people ready and if somebody is sick, uh, pray for them and just be careful because the wolves might attack you, meaning religious people, the government might come against you, your society might come against you and just go there. And the Bible says they, they did not go to cast out devils, they did not go to exercise spiritual authority, they went to do their assignment given to Jesus and lo and behold authority kicked in. They didn't look for demons, they looked for the lost, but the authority was released. I want to speak to people today in this room, not to focus on your authority in Christ, but focus on your assignment to Christ. When you walk in your assignment, you will walk in authority. Even if you, your name is not known, even if you are nameless, even if you are a baby in Christ, even if you are not even a sheep but you're a lamb, meaning you just recently got saved. You just, this whole thing is very new for you. You don't have a lot of knowledge and experience. You haven't read Bob Larson's books. You haven't read Break Free or Fight Back, not yet. And so you, you haven't got those things yet. You haven't went through the freedom we can erase to deliver. And you're like, man, I'm a babe. I'm a lamb. I, I, my name doesn't matter. Nobody knows my name. I'm not known in the Christian circles. I'm I'm very new at this. In the world I had a reputation, in the world I had experience but in here I have very little and I don't feel like I have the anointing for deliverance. I don't feel like I have the anointing to operate in the realm of the Spirit. I don't have that. My friend, if you commit to the assignment in Jesus, you will walk in the authority of Jesus. That's good. Hallelujah. Please, it does not, yeah, the Bible did not mention their names, but Jesus says their names were written in the book of life. The question, even if the Bible doesn't have your name, even if some other people don't remember your name, the question is not 
who remembers your name the question is your name written in the book of life because that's where your authority is connected to you my friend your spiritual maturity does not does not increase your authority your authority comes from your obedience to Jesus Christ yes it's true it's good to read books on authority it's good to go to seminars on authority it's good to uh, be equipped in authority but there is something very simple and basic when a child of God who just got saved a week ago two weeks ago and a babe in Christ a lamb in Christ not a sheep yet not a mature man yet maybe they're nameless they're faceless they're still very fragile they're not part of the elite or the spiritual cliques or gurus but they say Lord I'm gonna do what you called me to do I'm gonna tell my neighbors about Christ I'm gonna read my Bible I'm gonna raise my children I'm gonna love my husband I'm gonna love my wife I'm gonna do what God called me to do and the Bible says and they were surprised demons are subject to us to our name Jesus you didn't send us to do this stuff but this stuff found us don't seek deliverance seek devotion to God see commitment to God's will see commitment to God's purposes somebody say amen say this with me say my authority comes from my assignment say my assignment is the breeding ground for my authority your authority is connected to your assignment if you are currently as a Christian feel like man I'm not walking in authority I have opposition. I have attacks. I feel like I lost my authority. This, I'm going to ask you to ask yourself one question. Have you stepped out of God's assignment in your life? Have you focused so much on walking in dominion and victory, but you haven't focused walking in what God called you to do? Because God's purpose over you always has an umbrella of God's protection and God's supply. When a Christian fulfills their duty as a Christian they automatically have an authority it's like a police officer when you are a police officer you already you you have a badge and you will have a gun even if you forgot that gun in the police station and you forgot that badge and the police in the police station but having a uniform will be enough you already walk with that confidence and with that authority now let's imagine for example you are not a police officer but you want to impersonate a police officer first of all it's a felony it's a crime when a non-christian wants to walk in spiritual authority they are impersonating it's a felony in the spiritual realm they will always come under a heavy attack that's why the sons of Sceva they were impersonating spiritual authority it backfired against them when you're not walking in obedience to God you are impersonating spiritual authority there will always be consequences so the secret is not that you need to be perfect you just need to be obedient because authority is connected to obedience you can't live like you want to live do what you want to do and say oh I'm a Christian and so I, therefore I walk in authority that's like me walking out on the street and say I'm a police officer why because I live in Pasco no 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 I don't belong to that department no 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 the the chief of police did not release me they did not give me the identification now I can buy the police uniform on, M on eBay I can buy the badge on Amazon it does not make me a police officer it does not make me somebody who has the authority I will always walk with insecurity and that's why whatever it said today he did the meditation all the stuff but the spiritual world recognizes one name the spiritual world responds to one authority and that authority is the name of Jesus now if I am really good liar and if I am really good fake person I can fool one or two people in Pasco with a fake impersonation with a fake ID and with a fake and, and with a gun and with a fake wardrobe I can pull them over and even take their money but that will only go so far my friend if you want to walk in authority you got to belong to the department of Jesus you got to have Jesus as your chief of police. You got to have Jesus clothe you with righteousness. You got to and then he gives you his badge and then he gives you his power. But please understand if you do not walk in obedience and you, pro you will pretend to have authority, you will not have authority because that authority is given to people who walk in obedience. Not to those who are perfect. Let me say that again because some of us in here today say, Vlad, but I still have shortcomings. Your babe. 
I still have um, certain issues. Maybe you're a lamb. I am not saying today that it only belongs to the shepherds. Authority belongs to the sheep and authority belongs to the lambs. Authority doesn't just belong to spiritual fathers. It also belongs to spiritual young men and it also belongs to spiritual babes. Authority doesn't just belong to people whose names are known on YouTube and who write books on deliverance. Authority is known by people who they're just called 70. Their names were not known but it didn't matter because as long as you're walking in obedience, you will walk in your authority. Can somebody say amen? I want you to notice in verse in verse 3 he said go your way so as you walk in your obedience he says I send you as lambs among wolves not a lambs among a wolf wolves plural now and this at first will seem like people who walk in obedience to Christ I want to correct a traditional thinking that is not scriptural that when you walk in authority you are a lamb and the devil is the wolf that is not what this means because Jesus says it later that you are a lion and devil is a snake. In the spiritual world, you are not a lamb, you're a lion. But in the natural world, when you walk, when you and I walk in obedience to Christ, we are lambs. Not the devil is the wolf. Who is the wolf? The government, society, your family. And a lot of times, People pretty much they will come against you, religious institution. So religious institution, the government, the society and our family become the wolves. Why? Because when they criticize it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. Who attacked Jesus? It wasn't the demons. It was the religious institution. It was the government. It was even his own family and it was the society. So Jesus is saying, as I walk in obedience, I am a lamb among wolves. Meaning I don't fight back the government. Now I can protest in the United States. I exercise my amendment rights and everything. But in those days and even in our days, we're supposed to have a characteristic of a lamb. When we walk in innocence and wisdom. We don't fight spiritual warfare naturally. We take the beating when our family attacks us and criticizes and says you joined a cult. When the society looks at us and because we believe what the Bible says and calls us homophobic and calls us crazy and calls us people oh you don't care about this and you don't care about that. We don't try to fight back the society. We walk as sheep in a society full of wolves. Now the most important part to keep in mind, when we get persecuted, the wolf in here is persecution, not retaliation from the devil. The wolf in here is not, oh, I did a spiritual warfare, the devil is attacking me. No, 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 my friend. The wolf in here is not a devil. It's the society that doesn't receive Jesus Christ that will attack a person who walks in authority of Christ. There will always be an attack on your life from society family, government or religious institution that you walked away from the moment you commit your life to obedience to Christ. One of them will attack you. One of them will say things about you. One of them will spread rumors about you. One of them will even try to sue you. One of them will try to make your life difficult and sometimes God forbid all four. And we shouldn't be discouraged by walking in authority because our Savior constantly was being bitten by wolves and he was the Lamb of God. I'm not talking about demons. I'm talking about Pharisees. I'm talking about the government officials and his own family coming and saying this guy is going crazy. Let's take him home and religious institutions and society was not very fond of him. As we speak right now, every person in here has one of these wolves currently in their life. That somebody is persecuting you. There are people watching us on live stream that you have people that are attacking you. It's illegal in your country to believe in God and that's you being a lamb among the wolves. But I want to encourage you, never stop being a lion just because you're a lamb. And when you're being persecuted, just one little side note, because some people are persecuted and they're like, oh the devil is attacking me. Well the problem, if you're not paying taxes, it's not the devil's attacking you. Remember, if you're being a goat, don't claim the persecution as a, as a sheep. 
oh I'm just being attacked my family is attacking me will your dad give you a curfew nine o'clock and you came at 11 that is not an attack on your faith that is an attack on your punctuality that is a criticism why because you're not acting like a sheep you're acting like a goat you're not a sheep among the wolves you're a goat among the wolves okay and so we have to repent for those things and not walk around and say oh I'm just being persecuted I'm just being attacked I'm just such a demonic oppression no 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 my friend if you don't live like a sheep do not start claiming this verse for your trouble come on somebody but the part that I want to highlight is this I believe according to the scripture that Jesus does not promise us retaliation when we do spiritual warfare what does that mean in here Jesus says if you walk in your authority nothing by no means somebody say nothing, nothing. By, no means by no means will hurt you in the realm of the flesh we are lambs we can be taken advantage of and that's okay in the realm of the spirit the same lamb becomes a lion you're persecuted by the religious leaders but Jesus says you tremble. Lambs don't trample on snakes. Lions do. Lambs don't exercise authority. Lions do. So you're a lamb among the wolves physically but in the same time while you're being persecuted maybe misunderstood and criticized Jesus says do not forget you have a dual identity. One is a lamb and the other one is a lion and do not stop attacking just because you're being attacked by people but I want to overthrow this myth the moment I walk in my authority the moment I fast and pray the devil will come against me hell will break loose loose I know it's popular in Christian culture but I want to just pinch at it right now and say it's not scriptural Jesus never in the Bible not once said or promised spiritual retaliation he told us physical persecution not spiritual retaliation that means when you commanded the devil to go you should go to sleep like a baby oh I got nightmares now why because I delivered this person that's not scriptural there's a crack in your spiritual armor and who allowed that crack traditional teaching you need to remove tradition and believe Jesus tradition teaches this if you do spiritual warfare cover yourself a lot with the blood cover yourself with oil cover yourself with water why because the devils are coming back to attack you Jesus says not that he says you will trample meaning you break when you step on it you break its neck it can't move no more it says by no means meaning it's not possible by no means it will hurt you again so what is hurting me traditional thinking because what tradition did is tradition replaced the shield of faith in the realm of the spirit with a shield of cloth that can't catch bullets. Tradition cannot help you. That's why we have to throw away the tradition, this in this area and say no, I will do spiritual warfare. I will heal the sick. I will cast out devils. I will walk in my authority in Christ and the devil will not fight me back. He's been defeated. He's been disarmed and he's been laid under my feet. Come on somebody. Give God some praise right now for your authority in Jesus. Give God some praise right now for your authority in Jesus. Devil, you can't fight back. I can fight back. You can't fight back. Why? And then, and if the devil, we say, but the devil is fighting. He always does fight. But you have a spiritual armor in the realm of the spirit. It's called a shield of faith. Faith in what? In what Jesus says that nothing by no means shall hurt you. Faith in what? That you have that armor. As you sleep the devil will shoot stuff at you. It will bounce off. You won't even know. Why? Because you have that armor because you believe in what Jesus said instead of what your dad said, what your previous pastor said or what other people said. If you believe that exercising spiritual authority brings attacks, I can tell you one thing about your life. You're under attack. In fact, always under attack. And your connection to that attack is this, it's because I've been trying to serve God. And you justify that and then you use the verses like Jesus got baptized in the water and then after that the devil pow attacked him. Elijah brought the prophets and then the devil pow attacked him. And I'm just like Jesus and Elijah, I'm the third guy, pow he's attacking me. Mm -mm. You believed a lie. You will be attacked by people because that's part of the promise. 
sheep among wolves but you will be attacking and Satan will not be able to attack back because the blows you deal you can recover from those blows the blow of the name of Jesus the force of that name you can't recover from that after that devil cannot throw a counter punch punch after that it's 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 your punch is weak but the name of Jesus is so strong he says you will trample and nothing by no means somebody say nothing somebody say by no means will hurt me I believe in that ever since I changed my mind about this we do deliverance conferences race to deliver conferences deliverances we sleep like babies our team doesn't come under attack you may say does that mean there's no attacks no it doesn't mean that life goes on the only thing we come under attack from is Christians all the time people say do you come under attack from the devils no Christians all the time why because Jesus promised we will be wolves we will be sheep among wolves and the wolves sometimes it could be a religious institution a government a society or it could be even our family so I just want to encourage you if you're spiritually under attack check your armor have you let cracks in memorize this verse rehearse it until it becomes true in your life you were destined to walk in authority if walking in authority creates repercussions then praying for healing also has repercussions if I pray for somebody and they get delivered and afterwards I get that demon attacking me does that mean that if I pray for healing I have the same sickness attacking me does that mean if I lead a person to the Lord does that mean the next day I'm going to be the same kind of a sinner that they were no of course not there's a protection in doing God's will guy could can save you 50% or more in your car insurance but Jesus does 100% the whole 100% I'm uh, quickly I'm gonna bring this to an end somebody say exercising authority diminish Satan's influence I want you to see this disciples came back and I want you to see what Jesus said he says I saw Satan fall now traditionally how that's understood is that he saw Satan fall when he fell from heaven this is not what Jesus is talking about I believe and a lot of other people the theologians even who translate the Bible and they say application of this is this Jesus is saying when you were casting out demons I saw Satan fall from where heaven not the third heaven where God lives the second heaven where he ruled over particular regions and he was falling like lightning every time you exercise dominion now he didn't fall completely from the whole earth where he doesn't control the earth but the influence of his territory where you stepped in was being diminished because you exercise your authority every time you walk in authority Satan falls again he falls again not only in your life but in your territory because demons are territorial demons they like their territories that's why when the legion said to Jesus we're okay with leaving the man but don't let us out of this country that's why a prince of Persia, a demon came to Daniel and he tried to resist Daniel and the, the angel that came to Daniel and said I fought with the prince of Persia. He wasn't fighting a man. One simple angel could slay thousands in a split second but the archangel was fighting a spiritual principality. That's why Paul says that we fight principalities and powers. When you walk as a babe, as a lamb, as a nameless maybe Christian in your authority, Satan's influence in the realm of the spirit in your family in your city in your region in your county begins to be diminished because you walk in authority can somebody say amen number four bring Jesus joy by walking in authority the Bible says Jesus was exuberantly joyful see God is a is a joyful God according first Timothy chapter 1 verse 11 God rejoices in his works according to Psalm 104 31 God also rejoices when person gets saved. We know that in the Gospel of Luke chapter 15. God rejoices over Jerusalem. But there is one thing that gives Jesus joy. And that is when he sees babes battle. 
when he sees lambs walk in authority when he sees the 70 walk in their assignment and they begin to cast out devils they begin to command they begin to decree and declare for those of you coming to our church maybe for the first time or the first few times and you're like man why did they spend time um, speaking to the situation speaking to the sickness like it's a real thing because see authority declares authority speaks authority doesn't beg authority doesn't plead the police officer doesn't say please I beg you I implore you by the name of the police department of Pasco could you roll down your window and then just uh, give me a license if you want to if you don't want to I understand license and registration there is authority come on somebody now somebody's been a police officer <laughs> yeah there is an authority and he doesn't beg he tells he tells it the way it is now he's a human authority you are a spiritual authority that's why you will not understand these prayers that we pray until you understand the authority you have he says if you have faith you will speak to the mountain not ask the mountain not plead with the mountain not bargain with the mountain not make deals with the devil but you will command why because authority changes your voice tone it changes your attitude it changes your approach you become a lion and the devil becomes a snake not the other way around you're not a little sheep and the devil is a wolf you're not a lamb and the devil is a lion you are a lion and the devil is a snake he's biting the dust and you are trampling over him somebody give God some praise somebody give God some praise hallelujah hallelujah Woo. God rejoices Jesus rejoices when you walk in authority you want to put a smile on Jesus's face rise up in your authority you want to put a smile in God's heart step into your divine authority stop playing a victim stop walking around like a spineless weak snowflake Christian realize who you are in Jesus Christ stop giving devil more credit than he already has gotten over your life he's been defeated he's been disarmed he's been put under your feet and Jesus says I give you authority now what I love about this is that in this verse is the only time I see in the Gospels where Jesus gives authority and after that no assignment every time he gave authority to disciples he always told them go cast out demons and here he gave them authority and no assignment because he gave them authority for life this authority is to live this authority is for everyday life as a mother everyday life as a father everyday life as a businessman everyday life as a student Jesus is giving authority for you to live as a person it's not you're not on duty and off duty you are a police police officer spiritually all the time when you sleep you have authority when you're taking a shower you have authority when you wake up at night you have authority when you go in your car in the morning you have authority when you work you have authority you carry that you're never off duty he gives you authority can somebody say amen you give Jesus joy you give Jesus joy when he looks at us casting out demons when he looks at us commanding those mountains when he looks at us walking you know proud as believers in his the power of his name he rejoices he smiles says that's 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 right devil you take that. that that's my babes over there crushing your kingdom that's my babes over there destroying your works that's my lambs over there in the eyes of the man but devil you know they're not lambs they're fierce lions they might be young but they are fierce they are bold they are courageous they are powerful that's my boy over there it puts a smile on Jesus's face when you walk in your authority somebody give God some praise and the last thing and we're gonna pray and that is this the authority of the name of Jesus has been granted exclusively to believers in Mark chapter 16 the Bible says those who believe will cast out demons in my name he did not say those who want to those who want to help people everyone had a, such a powerful conclusion and confirmation to that he wanted to help people that's not enough I also want to pull over criminals on the street it doesn't give me the right to be a police officer okay I also want to see sometimes I see a person speeding and I'm like man I wish I wish they are breaking the law and they're doing it wrong I still cannot pull them over just because you wish and want and desire that's not enough you eat exclusively to people who belong to Jesus so believers it's your right believers it's exclusively given to you 
his name is given to you use that name as a source of authority it's not a magic name it's not a charm it's not some kind of a gimmick but when you are obedient to him as a person his name becomes your tool it works in our church a lot of times where somebody would come up somewhere else and say things like not in the name of Vlad but Vlad said and he could get you free coffee in the coffee shop <laughs> I see Anna says uh-uh but um, it can sometimes uh, it can get you a lot of things in the church done but after a while if you're lying <laughs> you're gonna not only get kicked out of the church your salvation can be questionable but um, but if you know me personally if we are in a relationship and you go somewhere and you say Vlad said it's the same thing as if I said when you're in relationship with Jesus and you walk to some old little crouchy demon and you tell them in Jesus name what you're saying is Jesus said you have to do and that's why demons will obey that's why many times when we see during deliverance you know a big old demon you know and we're very young and the demon will say oh I'm so good at you I got so you know like and the more they 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 glorify themselves that's that's when they they're very weak already and stuff and then that name of Jesus like lightning begins to break that spirit begins to break those curses you got the name of Jesus let's rise to our feet every head bowed and every eye closed we've heard so much about authority today We've heard so much about the power of the name of Jesus and we also heard how changing your life starts with you surrendering your life to Jesus. Whether you're watching me on live stream right now or you are physically in this building. If you have not made a decision to give your life to Jesus Christ yet, today is that day. Maybe your story is like Everett's story. You're looking for power everywhere or maybe today you feel so powerless, you feel so empty, you feel so lost. Jesus came 2,000 years ago. He was God. He died for your sin. He rose again and He is soon coming again to rule and reign. Today He wants to rule and reign in your heart. He wants to forgive you of your sin. It cost Him His life to give you this free gift. If you don't accept this gift, the Bible gives a very severe warning. You will stand before God and give an account. God is a holy God. He's not going to put your sin under the carpet because He loves you. His holiness won't allow that. That's why Jesus died. If you're saying, Vlad, I would like to give my life to Jesus today. I would like to get saved. I would like to come back to God today. When I count to three, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand. One, hell is hot. Eternity is very long. Two, Jesus is the only way to heaven. The only one door. Three, raise that hand high. If you're saying, I would like to get saved today, just raise that hand high. I would like to pray with you today. Father, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. If you're watching us on live stream. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. I see your hand. I'm going to wait for a few more seconds. If you would like to give your life to the Lord today, in Jesus' name. Thank you. I see your hand. Thank you. I see your hand. Those of you who raised your hands, pray this prayer with me right now. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sin and wash me with your precious blood. I surrender my life to you and from this day forward I choose to follow you. Wash me, cleanse me and make me yours. In Jesus name, Amen.